Thank you to our witnesses. Uh, I never expected today to be <clears throat> quite as emotional for me as it has been. Uh, I've talked to a number of you and gotten to know you. I think it's important to tell you right now, though. You guys may like individually feel a little broken. Okay, uh, look, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop here just for one second. I don't like laughing at people because they cry. In fact, I do not laugh at people when they cry. Sincerely. Where I do make fun of people is when they go through the most painful, disingenuous hack job of an acting shtick that you've ever seen. This guy, he's Kinzinger is like is like channeling. He's trying to channel the death of his dog when he was a kid to just squeeze out one little tear. Just one, just one tear. Can't happen. Cause it's so bloody disingenuous. Just okay. Uh, you guys all talk about the effects you have to deal with. And, you know, you talk about the impact of that day. It's going to go vocal fry. But you guys won. You guys held. You know, democracies are not defined by our bad days. Oh, he did the Bill Clinton lip. We're defined by how we come back from bad, bad days. D does he not give off a little bit of the vibe of, I did not have sexual relations with that woman you guys held you guys held how we take accountability for that and now he's going back to the vocal fry and for all the overheated rhetoric surrounding this committee <laughs> I mean, he sounds constipated. Our mission is very simple he sounds constipated it's to find the truth mm -hmm. and it's to ensure accountability okay we're done oh uh, you guys held you guys held oh um Good afternoon, East Coast. Good morning, West Coast. Good brunch, Central. Um, yeah, I realized, I forgot what I forgot. I remembered what I forgot to set up the stream on locals uh, because we are simulcasting streaming on YouTube, on Rumble, and on locals at vivabarnslaw.locals.com. And the way the system is working now because systems are better than goals. We're going to end on uh, YouTube to go exclusive to Rumble and Locals. And then at the end of the stream, I end on Rumble and carry on at Locals where we take some questions. I read the Rumble Locals tips and so on and so forth. Who was that guy? Um, I'll tell you, that guy, Jim Bottle, okay, I like that name, uh, apparently had some painful gas, <laughs> according to Mrs. Hayes. That's Adam Kinzinger, the bipartisan element to the January 6th Kangaroo Committee that spent two years investigating the January 6th insurrection, the most unarmed insurrection that never was. Because when you go overthrow a government and you belong to the demographic that is very uh, Second Amendment rights, uh, very uh, whatever other um, besmirching, demeaning names the left or you know coastal cities want to call flyover America, uh, when you go to stage an insurrection, you show up empty handed. And if you're really ballsy, like you really want to throw the government over, overthrow the government, you want to insurrect the government, you show up with an American flag, but it has to be on a pointy flagpole. That's how you overthrow the government. Uh, the, the discussion of the day is going to be I love how people call everybody Tucker Carlson is controlled opposition, yada, yada. Uh, one will never know who is controlled opposition and who is not, except for that person. Because Lord knows I get called controlled opposition or Mossad or uh, a shill or whatever. People call Tucker, people call Tucker Carlson um, controlled opposition. I'm going to save the dog for the end of this. Um, and I don't, I, I don't care. All that I know is that Tucker Carlson is now blowing the lid off the January 6th kangaroo committee Boy, howdy, as we say in the industry. Like, uh, some of us knew. You know, some can say, well, you didn't really know if you didn't have the evidence. I think we've had the evidence for a long time to definitively know that everyone on that January 6th committee, and I call it the Kangaroo Court Committee, um, were liars. Propagandist liars. Because I spent... Oh man, do you remember like I was going to live stream each one of those hearings and I did like, I think the first two, I did two or three overall. 
it was the most patronizing, dishonest, disingenuous spew of lies that you've ever seen. But you had to have a certain base amount of information to know that. I think we all knew that. There's a lot of people out there who might not have known that back in the day or are now going to look back and say, oh, Viva, you got lucky when you called them all a bunch of liars and this was a setup from the beginning. I don't think we got lucky. I think we were just, you know, paying attention to stuff like those who said, don't do certain medical interventions to your body. Others of us say, well, you guys, you made a good guess, but based on inadequate information. No, they, they might have just been looking at the right information when others were not. Um, it is, it was obvious. Um, from day one, when Robert and I were live streaming and he was at in Washington, but not at the events, and the day one, and we're like, yeah, this doesn't look as bad as the media is portraying it to be. They spent two years um, not building it into something because that would that would presume that there was a foundation on which to build the lies, lying about what it was, um, lying about what it represented, and in so doing also, you know, downplayed and uh, demeaned some of the most actually uh, historically traumatizing days in American history, Pearl Harbor being one, 9-11 being the other. By comparing January 6th to 9 -11. Okay, so they had two years of these flipping hearings or two years of investigation and then they had their primetime hearings. And some of us knew it was, a, it was a pile of lies, a big, steaming, stinky pile of lies. Um, anyways, now Tucker Carlson got access to 40,000 hours of the footage from January 6th on the Capitol that had not hitherto been disclosed to the public. Why? I don't know. Ask ask Cry McChristine, Adam Kinzinger, why they didn't release these uh, the the footage that Tucker Carlson from Fox News got access to from Speaker McCarthy. Why didn't they release this? They're accusing Tucker Carlson now of lying and misrepresenting. They had two years to release the. I mean, forty thousand hours, according to Tucker Carlson, a lot of it was just like empty empty room footage of like CCTV, um, you know, capturing nothing. I, I, you know, I got 40,000 hours of security footage around the house, I guess. And by and large, no one's going to, you know, it, it's nothing. It's, it's, it's space. Not all of it, however. And we're going to get into that today because it's, it's bad. Solitary confinement. And I know that you're talking about uh, uh, Jacob Chansley, Jacob Angeli, a.k.a. the QAnon shaman. We're going to get into all of it. We're going to get into all of it. Um, let me see what we're going to do, however. Uh, standard disclaimers. No medical advice. No election fortification advice. No legal advice. But we will be talking about stuff. Uh, YouTube has these things called rumble rants, like what you're looking at right here. Andrew Matthews. Viva, check out the Saudi Arabia for 15-minute city. Scary. That's that We discussed that on Sunday night with Barnes. Uh, YouTube takes 30% of these wonderful things called super chats, which is what people do if they want to support the channel, support me. Um, if you don't like that, and some people don't, we are simultaneously streaming on Rumble. They have Rumble rants, and Rumble takes 20%, so it's better for the creator and better to support a platform that actually supports free speech. There is one here that says, Uncle Kenny, saw you a lot on Sunday night. I need a clip. Say, I am Mossad. <laughs> oh, God. Now you're going to clip it, me saying, I am Mossad, and then cackling like a lunatic. Oh, shoot, I've done myself in. Let the memes begin, people. Uh, Rumble Rant. The best way to support the channel, if you want to go to vivabarnslaw.locals.com, become a non-supporting member, just member of the community. We're at like 107,000 or 105,000. Or become a supporting member, which is seven bucks a month, 70 bucks a year or more if you so choose. Some people actually choose to do that. Or go to vivafry.com, get some merch if you want. Um, so we're going we're gonna to cover the January 6th kangaroo court confirmed. Uh, and we're going to go through a lot of it because Tucker Carlson, it's mostly Jake, um, Jacob Chansley, which is, I, I was thinking about it before the stream today. Other than stealing a life, taking a life, there is, I cannot think of a greater theft than time. Uh, it, Jacob Angeli, we're going to get into it. And a lot of these January 6th defendants uh, have been detained in pretrial detention in horrific uh, totalitarian authoritarian regime conditions, solitary confinement, some of them sustained questionable injuries. Other than stealing a life, stealing someone's time is the greatest theft because it's not reimbursable. Money, 
reimbursable. Material objects, reimbursable. Stolen time cannot be refunded. It cannot be returned. And it can difficult, difficultly be compensated. And I was, I was talking about the Murdoch conviction on Sunday. And I, I was talking about OJ Simpson with someone. It's like, geez, how long did he went to jail for nine years for the Vegas memorabilia robbery? Nine years for that. Whereas even if you think he got away with murder uh, in the criminal trial, uh, and this was clearly retribution for that, uh, you know, what people felt was a wrongful acquittal, nine years for theft is theft. Now, you know, there might have been attenuating circumstances there, whatever. Money, and this is a good point, money is stolen time. True. But money can be compensated. So someone, you know, steals $9 million from their clients. That money can be reimbursed. Time can only be compensated with money, but time can never be reimbursed. But uh, yes, absolutely. When you steal someone's money, it's not so much the money. It's the time it took to acquire that money, which is stealing time indirectly, but money can be compensated. So, you know, theft of money can be uh, rehabilitated. Hold on. You ready for this? <laughs> Winston went to the groomer. Oh, he smells quite perfumey. And he looks very angry at what the groomer has done to him. Winston, Psst, are you angry? Look at that face. <laughs> okay. Um, he just calmed down. <sighs> oh, he was also convicted of kidnapping. Okay, well, for real. Scratch that, but you know what I meant. Okay. Let me see what this says. January 6th will be a stain on our history. Unfortunately, a record, well, a political, judicial, but let, let's, let's, let's get into it. Be, because Tucker Carlson, uh, whatever you think about him, I, my God, people are, 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 are just, people are idiots. Like, I'll, I, and I'm going to pull up, you know, let's start with a couple of the bad takes. If you saw the, the list of links that I have uh, currently in the backdrop, it would give you anxiety. Let's just start with um, a bad takes on Twitter. If I can find it. Let me just find the good one. Here we go. Joe Walsh. Before we get into the actual evidence, we'll do some bad takes, and then we'll end on YouTube and go to Rumble. Here. Joe Walsh. This is, I mean, Joe, I, I know he's got a... He's got a, a sad history, and I'm saying that, and like, that's, I mean, a legit, like, he's got, um, there's only so much, you know, that, that someone can have suffered through in life, you know, that would be relevant to, to excusing current stupidity. This is Joe Walsh. Let me just, let me see. Joe Walsh hosts the White Flag with Joe Walsh, former candidate for president, former congressman, be brave. Did, oh, am, am I, I'm thinking of, I'm thinking of another guy. Who, who did that? He had a show, a television show, a crime show. See if anybody knows that in the chat. And yeah, it doesn't matter. Let's just read Joe Walsh's wonderfully insightful rebuttal to what we're going to see is uh, the disclosures coming from Tucker Carlson. What we know, this is, this is Matt Walsh's, Joe Walsh's assessment. What we know, Tucker Carlson is lying about January 6th. Anybody who's been hanging around the channel will be able to um, look at a statement and be able to distinguish between statements of opinion and statements of fact, uh, ad hominem attacks and evidentiary support. Now, there's nothing necessarily wrong with an opinion, but an opinion needs to be substantiated by facts. An opinion on its own is not a fact. Tucker Carlson is lying about January 6th uh, is, a, is an opinion that needs to rely on some facts which are acutely missing from Joe Walsh's six-point plan how to gaslight the public into not believing that what they are seeing is what they're seeing with their own two eyes. What we know, he's lying. That's a nice opinion. We'd like to see the backup for that, the receipts, so to speak. His audience will believe his lies. That's another uh, prediction, matter of opinion. Thus far, not supported by any receipts. Other right-wing talkers will spread his lies. Hmm, that sounds like an iteration of items one and two. Four, 40% or so of Americans will doubt the truth of January 6th. Okay, that, that presupposes a fact that has yet to be even specified. Five, the divide in America will harden. I could, I could probably agree with that, uh, that opinion. 
Six, and we're not sure if this is a threat, prediction, promise, or fear, although, you know, like um, David Mamet says, and it's going to come up again later on, every fear hides a wish. There will be more violence. Oh, is, is that a threat? As in there will be more violence, uh, uh, like the violence that we saw on January 6th, which from a lot of the video evidence that's coming out right now, uh, might not have been only exclusively or even primarily a wild group of insurrectionists unleashing on the police. It might be the police, you know, like pepper spraying willy-nilly, everybody in the crowd swinging bats willy-nilly. That's Matt Walsh's wonderfully insightful take. It doesn't, con it doesn't contain one fact. It doesn't contain one element to support his opinion. Um, and then let's just see what we don't do. So that's Joe Walsh. Wh who's the guy that had the, the show? Uh, the, the, the Justice Show. Joe Walsh stayed at Hotel California. Um, what, does everybody know the show? It was like a, it was like a, a, like a not um not unsolved mysteries, but kind of like unsolved mysteries. Was that Joe Walsh? Anyhow, that's one uh, wonderfully insightful take. It's just it, it's it, it it heavily relies on evidence and not just name calling. Um, it's it's substantiated, supported. Um, uh, and here, let, let's let's do John Walsh. Oh, I'm sorry, that's John Walsh, America's Most Wanted. Okay, sorry, there's Matt Walsh, <laughs> J uh, John Walsh, and who was the other one we just looked at? Okay, <laughs> John Walsh, people. Sorry. Okay, here, let, let's have it. Let's have another take. This one. This one we got to go down the um, inception, the Twitter, the Twitterception. So this is Judd Legume, <laughs> Judd Legum. I write. Popular Information, an independent newsletter dedicated to accountability in journalism. Okay. His DMs are open. Um, his take on a video that we're going to see in a second. So the argument by Tucker is that Hawley did, did run from the mob, but other people were running too, so the video was a lie. This is the best he can come up with. I suspect some of you are not going to have done the, the Twitter inception because... Most people on Twitter are going to read this and then move on, believe, retweet, or know that Judd Legum, Legume, is a liar. So the argument by Tucker is that Hawley did run from the mob, but other people were running too, so the video was a lie. This is the best he can come up with? Okay, let's um, scre mental screen grab that assessment of what we're going to watch right now in response to this video. Hold on. Let's get the audio. This is from ACYN. I don't know who these, who all of these people are. Internet hooligan. <laughs> Clips made. With, that's a beautiful, beautiful drawing. Self-portrait. Um, let's let's hear what the the video to which Legume is responding. The surveillance footage we reviewed shows that famous clip was a sham, edited deceptively by the January sixth committee. The clip was propaganda. Not just remember what the accusation was. The allegation was other people were running. So uh, the clip was a lie. That's the best you can come up with. He was running because other people were running. Oh. Not evidence. The actual videotape shows that Hawley was one of many lawmakers being ushered out of the building by Capitol Hill police officers. Oh, uh, I, maybe, maybe I'm wordsmithing, chat, and you'll let me know. Am I wordsmithing? Or is there a difference between running from the mob and being ushered out of a building by police. Is there, is there a material, factual difference in those two assessments? And in fact, Hawley was at the back of the pack. The coward tape was a lie, one of many from the January 6th committee. Checkmate, but let me, let's just... Lawmakers being ushered out of the building. Let's just play it again. ...shows that Hawley was one of many lawmakers being ushered out of the building by Capitol Hill police officers. Being ushered out of the building by Capitol Police officers, oh, how do I go forward here? Where the statement from someone who's doubling down on the lie is that he was running from the mob, but other people were too. Chat, am I being a disingenuous lawyer by wordsmithing here? Or is there not a material, conceptual, factual difference between saying someone was running from the mob versus abiding by police orders to evacuate a building? Is there a difference? It, let, let me, let's see. One, now you know what? Yes, there's a difference. No, there's no difference. That'll be the easiest way to do it. 
MSM is all propaganda needs to be shut down along with the government. If these videos don't show you our government is corrupt, you're hopeless. Don't pick on the typo guy. We know, we know what he meant. Yes, there's a big, there's a big freaking difference. <laughs> Viva's on it like chicken on a June bug. I'll tell you what, because they're liars. They are all pathological liars. And when they get caught in a lie, what do liars do? Because they're incapable of telling the truth. They've got to double down on their lies. And I wasn't going to bring this one up, but let's do it. Wh who's this lie going to come from? Let me see here. Go like this. Go like this. Who's this? I mean, we started off with Kinzinger, who's going to make all y'all gag. Let's go to the other member of the bipartisan committee that, by the way, didn't meet the quorum, didn't meet the legal requirements to be constituted, and the bipartisan aspect of it were two of the biggest most political hacks in the history of American politics, Republican Adam Kinzinger and Republican Liz Cheney. Is this it? Is this one? That looks like it. That looks like the one. Oh, so hold on. I want to bring it up. I don't just want to see it. Does it come up to the top when I bring it up? Or the... yeah, here it is. Okay, here. Let's see. Let's see what Liz Cheney has to say about things. <laughs> this, by the way, just appreciate what this was and notice the nice music in there for effect because the January 6th committee was all about getting to the truth of the matter. The truth was that this was an insurrection and therefore that's the truth to which they need to come. Facts be damned. They edited together videos that would make Joseph Goebbels green with envy in terms of the propaganda that it served to satisfy. Listen, listen to this. Let me just see. Eight, mil eight million views. <laughs> Multiple capital entry. Multiple capital entry. A, a, splicing audio over video. <laughs> there, the... Boy, it sure was convenient that there were. Hey, did, did scaffolding guy, the one who told everyone where to go and what to do, did he get arrested? Did he even get identified? <laughs> I mean, these, these clips in and of themselves are barely three seconds long. Now, by the way, it's not to say that there was not violence that day. There, there certainly was a, a portion of the protest that got violent and out of hand. Whether or not that characterizes hundreds of thousands of people who came down to peacefully protest, as Donald Trump said in his speech, well, it'll be up to you to decide I know people are going to say, well, look, the majority of the people who went to the BLM protests in the Summer of Love were peaceful. It was just a small minority that uh, got violent and started burning down buildings. Okay, that argument is there. The only question is going to be, uh, where do you draw the line at what characterizes an event and who gets prosecuted or persecuted for that? And where do you make the distinction that pockets of violence of people who clearly broke windows and got violent does not itself uh, qualify the entire event as an insurrection? Listen to this. Wait, when did she publish this? Oh, this is from, what's the date today? This is from today, March 7th. One lesson of Jan 6 is this. Trump's lies spread on TV and social media provoked a violent attack on our capital. No responsible adult and no American pledged to our constitution should deny what happened or repeat the same reckless lies. Do you ever notice how like their condemnations always contain like, self-gratifying, um, self-flattering, self-elevating uh, uh, implications. Like every, every one of their condemnations elevates them indirectly. It's, very, it's an amazing thing to actually compliment yourself uh, while uh, attempting to insult others. What a, it's, a it's a beautiful strategy and she's very good at it. One lesson is this, his lies, she's honest, spread on TV and social media, not like what she did. Provoked a violent attack on our capital. No responsible adult. She's a responsible adult. Especially ones who pledged allegiance to the Constitution. The Constitution that, you know, Liz Cheney is seeking to uphold by denying a slew of rights of some of the accused in January 6th should deny what happened or repeat the same reckless lies. When caught in a lie, double down, people. Do, we're going to end on this. We're going to end YouTube on this lie. Coming from, we're going to go back to, to, to Crybaby McCryface, or I'll just call him the liar. Kinzinger, t talking about lies. It says, this, this lie 
doesn't really have anything to do with January 6th, but it's certainly um, an, indicative of the quality of minds that are fixated on this. The quality of minds of the people who, who partook in this bipartisan January 6th committee. The quality of mind and honesty and good judgment of Adam Kinzinger. I, I, this will never get old until he corrects and retracts. Until then, it's fair game to rub Adam Kinzinger's face in the ghost of Kiev, people. That's not the right... Darn it, I just... I just well, that just blew the punchline. The ghost of Kiev, people. Ah, oh, cripe. Jamie is so fired. Uh, hold on, where is it? Oh, well... The Ghost of Kiev, part two. Um, this is from Adam Kinzinger's Twitter feed. Now, the first one is the one he deleted. And we're going to read it just one more time, just so Adam Kinzinger uh, is reminded of, of his folly. And so the rest of the world is reminded of his folly. <laughs> deleted tweet from Adam Kinzinger. The hashtag Ghost of Kiev has a name. And he has absolutely owned the Russian Air Force. Godspeed and more kills. Samuel, QT, Raul Brando, I don't know what that means, Ukrainian ace fighter pilot known as the Ghost of Kiev. A real, real name is Samuel Hyde, a 36-year-old who was... And he links to an article. If there's anybody out there who doesn't yet know the Ghost of Kiev, was video footage from a video game. It looked very realistic, and I've seen a lot of these video games, and it's kind of outrageous how real it does look to some extent. It was fake. It was, I don't know if you call it a hoax, a gag, a 4chan meme that, that some idiots believed. And it's not to say that you're an idiot if you believed it and made a mistake and then realized and then deleted it, which some might think is exactly what Kinzinger did right here, because he deleted the tweet, right? The Ghost of Kiev has a name. Ukrainian ace fighter pilot, real name, Samuel Hyde. Maybe he deleted it. Oh, wow, I, I, got, I, I acted too quickly there and made a mistake. But no, because this is what he retweeted. And as of this morning, it's still there. Adam Kinzinger, hashtag fella. And I don't know what that means. What the hell does hashtag fella mean? It doesn't matter. To the hashtag ghost of Keeb, we raise a glass. Here is to even more. And he's retweeting John Noble. Throughout the conflict in Ukraine seen today, there is one Ukrainian MiG-29 fighter jet that is soaring through the skies of Kyiv. This single fighter jet has downed, has already earned itself an alias, the Ghost of Kyiv, and has already owned six Russian air. These are the people who you are relying on to tell you the truth. He still hasn't deleted the tweet. He still hasn't corrected it. That I know of. That's, um, that's Adam Kinzinger. That's the bipartisan. That's the bipartisan aspect of this committee and the, and the good judgment. And he served, in, he served in the military. He served in the Air Force, which makes it, I guess, even a little better. Whew. Okay, we're good. Let's do this here. I'm going to go. Now we're going to carry on with some of the actual video footage. Let me see. We got, we got another. Uncle, Uncle Kenny. I'm not going to. Certain types of criminals steal a lifetime, and uh, the the ones who do bad things to young people, and you're a thousand percent right about that. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go get the link here. I'm going to share it one last time, and we're going to go to YouTube and Rumble and leave. No, we're going to go to Rumble and Locals and leave YouTube. Everyone, the link is there. Let's mosey on over 1,600 people. So all of you, I see you at rumble and if for whatever the reason you don't like rumble uh or the user experience or you have first of all if you have any critique or uh, recommendations let me know because i sort of you know i can speak with tech um go to vivabarneslaw.locals.com right now here, i'll send that link here too so you can all go watch on locals because they now have installed rtmp capability at local so i'm streaming through locals I'm streaming on Locals through StreamYard, and it allows me uh, more creativity in the order in which I do things. Okay, peeps. Ooh, you know what? We're going to wait 20 seconds just so I can end it on YouTube at exactly 30 minutes on the nose. Um, how's everybody doing? 
How does one how does one kill 10 seconds? Nine, eight, seven, go over to Rumble or Locals and I'll see you there and I'm going to end it. Can I do it on exactly 